In this video, I'm going to show you how to learn any language quickly and effectively, how to be able to understand it and speak it without wasting time, with apps, without studying grammar, without having to go to classes or anything like that. As long as you follow this, and I'm going to uh, show you the, the entire process, everything, every step on the way, everything you need to do. As long as you work on it consistently, and you follow every step in the process, you will achieve fluency fast. And I'm talking about three or four months maximum. If you take it easy, you could do it in six. If you do it super intensely and you work full time on this, you can do it in a month. All right. Basically, learning a language is learning the meaning of words. You need to know a lot of words first. If you don't know the meaning of the words, you will not understand, obviously, and you won't speak it either. You won't be able to say what you want to say. And that's the first thing. Second thing is being able to understand those words. Yeah, you need to not only know the meaning of them, but also what they sound like when a native speaker says them. You need to know the proper pronunciation of the language, not only to understand the language, also to speak it well in a way that they will understand you. And the third thing is to get enough speaking practice to improve the three areas uh, of speaking a language, which are fluency, accuracy, and uh, pronunciation. You need to work on all three of them. So I'm going to, okay, let's, let's look at the whole process. I'm going to explain each one of them. First, you need vocabulary, obviously. You need to learn around 10,000 words to be able to understand uh, pretty much everything in the language. The best way to do this is to use associations. You associate, you visualize the words and you associate them with, the, with their meaning. You can learn, memorize hundreds of words a day if you do it like this. I've got lots of tutorials on how to do this. Just go check them out. This is a game changer because without this, you will have to rely only on input um, or rote memorization, which is a complete waste of time. Don't do that. Um, if you use flashcards, use them with this. Yeah, visualize, associate. It will take more time per flashcard, but uh, you will remember them long term. Otherwise, you'll end up forgetting a lot of it. Space repetition works, but if you do it with enough words, a lot of them will just fade away. But if you do it with associations, you will remember a lot, a lot of them, most of them, if you are good at visualizing. Um, once you know the most common 500 to 1,000 words, you can memorize those in a weekend, really, if you master this technique. Once you know the most common 500 to 1,000 words, you can start reading and you will understand a decent amount because uh, you will probably have heard of the 80-20 rule, which means that with the 500 most common words, you will understand half, like 50% of uh, a text, of the words in a text. It will not be enough to understand the whole text because there will be the, the other 50% will have an important meaning and you will not understand it. But if you memorize the 1,000 most common words, then you'll, you'll uh, recognize around 80% of the text, which is already enough to, in context, understand the rest. So memorize a lot of vocabulary first, start reading, start learning the rest of the vocabulary in context. You don't need to study grammar. You can learn all the grammar by reading. Yeah, you see it. You, you see the verbs in context, conjugated, you learn them if you read them enough, enough times in different contexts. You can also and should continue memorizing new vocabulary doing this so that you speed up the process. You could learn just by reading if you read enough, but it will be much slower. So you should speed up the reading uh, for vocabulary and grammar to learn it quickly. You should speed up the, the learning process by uh, combining reading with memorizing vocabulary. Then listening, same thing, more input, 
super important if you well first of all it's a really good way to get extra uh, reviewing time so everything you've memorized and everything you've read if you keep listening to stuff you uh like reviewing the grammar reviewing the vocabulary that you've been learning so you're more likely to remember it but also you're learning the correct pronunciation if you keep listening and listening will be hard at first but if you do it enough and if you've been doing a lot of reading as well and memorizing vocabulary you will very quickly start to understand a lot uh in a few weeks really if you memorize enough vocab and do a lot of reading your listening will improve quickly as well as long as you're also listening if you're skipping this uh reading and, and memorization of vocabulary obviously you're listening it's going to be very hard to uh, get good at understanding the language. Yeah. So you need to know the words first. If you don't know the meaning of the words, you will not understand the, like when you hear them. So first memorize vocabulary, then start reading, keep doing both, then start listening. And your comprehension should be good quickly. And then we, come to speaking because in order to get good at speaking, you need to practice speaking. There are people out there, or not just people, there are experts out there like Dr. Stephen Krashen, the comprehensible input theory hypothesis or whatever it's, they call it. Yeah, they say that enough input, enough reading, listening, that's, that's, that will make you speak well. And you shouldn't, like outputs completely unnecessary and that uh, doing a lot of input in the form of reading and listening is enough to end up speaking well, which I personally think is bullshit. You can learn a language. You can read English. If you're a native speaker, you can read at a really high level. You can read the classics and everything. If you don't do public speaking, you will not get good at public speaking. In order to get good at speaking, you need to practice speaking, obviously. So this is not different. Um, obviously, you need to do a lot of input. You need to do a lot of reading and listening. Otherwise, you will never speak well because you won't have the vocab and you will not know how to form sentences and you will not know how the proper pronunciation works. Obviously. So you can't really uh, learn to speak only by speaking to people. The, uh, just move to the country and talk to people, bro. Uh, people, those that stuff will never... Yeah, you'll get conversational at certain like basic interactions, but you will never get good at the language. If you just do that either. So it's not one or the other or the other. You need both and you need a lot of both. Yeah. So for comprehension, you need again over ten thousand words. If you do the just move to the country, bro, or just uh get a Latina girlfriend, bro, uh you'll learn like after ten years you'll know five hundred words in the language, which will be enough to talk to your girlfriend or to uh, to have basic interactions in a bar or something like that. But with the moment, you won't be able to read a newspaper article or you won't be able to understand TV shows, maybe TV shows with context, but not a podcast. And any kind of more complex conversation, anything deeper, no, you, you'll be lost. Uh, if you just do input, like I said, you will understand everything eventually, but it you will you, your speech will be very slow and it will take you ages to form sentences. It, they might be grammatically correct because of all the reading and listening. You will know the proper grammar and all that, but um, you will just be uncomfortable and not uh, yeah no, not fluent really. I know a lot of people like that. They read a lot of books in English. They can't really speak it um, because of confidence, because of, yeah. So how we solve that after once we're doing a lot of input, um, we create language islands, which is a list of all the situations and conversations you're likely to have, you think you will have, or that you would like to have. And we, for each one of them, we prepare a long list of sentences, basically everything you think you will have to say in the language. 
we divide it in sentences. We, we you can use uh, an Excel sheet for this. But divided by topics and, and, and situations, and a long list of sentences for each one of them. And then you practice saying them. Well, you you translate them into the language that you're learning. So you get one column in in English and one column in Spanish if you learn in Spanish, for example. And you practice saying them by reading the Spanish column aloud over and over again until you memorize them. It's as simple as that. If you memorize a thousand sentences that are relevant for the situations that you normally will talk the language, we talk in the language and, and the, all the interactions that you will have, you will do well um, in those interactions. So just this technique will carry you through most conversations. Obviously, if you're not doing enough of this, you will struggle to understand what they respond. So then that makes interactions a little bit harder. That's why you need to do both. Then, like I said, you get fluency, accuracy, and, and pronunciation. This will improve your fluency a lot. Also, your, your accuracy a little bit, because you repeat in aloud sentences that are grammatically correct, right? You read them aloud. So you're working on, you're working on uh, accuracy as well, and you're repeating complete sentences. Always think in sentences, not words. If you think in words, that's why memorizing lists of vocab alone is a it's not that effective because even if you know the words and you know you've studied the grammar, you will have to think of what you're going to say and you'll try to form the sentence in your mind and, and the conversation will move on because real life conversations are fast, they they messy, and if you are taking ages to form a sentence, it'll just move on. That's why having 500, 1,000, some people prepare like 5,000, 10,000 sentences. There are people who do that. And you rehearse saying them, you read, read the whole list aloud every single day. You'll be able to say a lot uh, without having to think about it. So your fluency will be really good if you do this. Listen and repeating. This will improve your pronunciation. Also, your fluency and accuracy, because again, you're repeating sentences aloud that are grammatically correct. So by sheer uh, muscle memory and, and repetition, you will improve your fluency. You'll get used to saying a lot in the language and also saying sentences that are correct. So you're working on accuracy as well. And if we are doing this exercise with sentences, uh, with the same sentences over and over again, let's say we grab 10,000, but we, we grab a thousand sentences and we do 10,000 repetitions. So the whole list 10 times, you will repeat each sentence 10 times in the end. So that means that the fifth, sixth time and so on, you will already know what you're saying and you'll start paying attention to small details in pronunciation and you'll start imitating. Naturally, you'll start sounding more and more like uh, the native speaker audio. That's how babies learn. Lots of listening, trying to repeat what they're listening to. That's the natural way of learning pronunciation. So if we combine these two and you do it long enough, your pronunciation will be good, your fluency will be good, your accuracy will be pretty good. Shadowing is a more advanced version of this. It's basically uh, listening and repeating, but simultaneously. You, when you're doing your listening to podcast or whatever you're listening to, you repeat after them simultaneously. Like when you're listening to music and singing along with it, you repeat along with it. This means uh, you have to think fast and repeat fast before the hit you with the next, next sentence and then repeat that one as well before the next sentence comes and so on. So this forces you to uh, uh, process information quickly, uh, respond quickly to the language. So this is very good for, uh, for conversation. If you do a lot of this, you'll get good at like, thinking fast in the language and responding, which is important for conversations. And then, the last thing will be 
we, we've talked about fluency, accuracy, and precision. Uh, pronunciation, accuracy, and precision are the same thing. This is about accuracy or precision. Uh, scriptorium is really good for learning a writing system. If you're learning Russian or Chinese or Arabic, you should use this technique. Um, that is explained in the in the NLL course. But the main thing is this, translation. Translation is the most effective way to identify and fix all the mistakes that you are making. And there will be plenty of them. I can assure that there will be plenty of them in the beginning, but if you keep doing this, this exercise, you will fix them quickly. This is why just move to the country and talk to people, bro, is a terrible advice because Nobody will, some people will, but you are not getting instant feedback all the time. And you will, apart from get, yeah, forget about that thing. Do this instead. And that's so many, so many flaws, that, that mentality that you will never speak well. Uh, your comprehension will be bad. Your fluency will be not very good outside your comfort zone. Accuracy will be terrible. Pronunciation will be terrible. So don't do that do this instead. Um, translation is basically taking a bilingual text or creating one. So you get a text in, in, let's say you learn Spanish, text in Spanish, use a translator, translate it to English. And then you translate the whole thing back into Spanish using pen and paper uh, without looking at the original. Uh, once you're finished, you look at the original, you compare them and you correct all your mistakes. And there will be a lot of them. But you keep doing this and you will remember a lot of those mistakes because self-correction is very effective. So the next day you'll make fewer mistakes and the next day you'll make fewer mistakes and so on until you basically make no mistakes. This will fix your grammar, your spelling, especially uh, your vocabulary as well. Sometimes you will not know words. If you don't know a word, it be and you're trying to translate from English into the language you're learning, and you don't know a word, it will it will be very very obvious that you don't know the word. You simply won't be able to write it. So this will find you. This will help you find all your yeah, all the blind spots you've got, all the mistakes you're making, and correct them. This combines really well with the language islands technique because if you've got a list of sentences in uh, the language you're learning, then them in English as well. And you can do this uh, in speaking as well. So, and, and you should actually with the language islands. You look at the list of sentences in English and you try to say each one of them in Spanish or whatever language you're trying to learn. And so it's, uh, hello, my name is Mikael. Hola, me llamo Mikael. You say it and then you look at the Spanish sentence after you, you've said it to, to check if you've said it correctly or not. And if you have said it correctly, you go on. If you haven't, then you repeat it correctly. Then you do it with the next sentence and then with the next. And you do the whole list and you make lots of mistakes. And you repeat it tomorrow, you'll make fewer mistakes and so on. In a couple of weeks, you make basically no mistakes in those sentences that you've prepared, which will allow you to speak fluently and relatively error-free. And if you also do this, then your pronunciation will be good. And this is the whole system. This is how natural language learning works. It's worked for me for over a dozen languages. Not for English. I learned English in school. I mean, it was... Uh, school system's terrible here. English, nobody learns it to a good level. Almost no one learns it to a good level in school. In fact, I would say no one learns it to a good level in, in school. I, I learned it online, talking to people. But English is the easy language, right? To learn online because everything online is in English. Like if you play video games, watch videos, blah, blah, blah. So as a teenager, learning English was easy. But the rest of the languages I've learned, uh, some of them I've gone to classes, complete failure, years wasted. The moment I started doing this, I hadn't developed the system yet, but that's how I developed it, just trial and error, trying new different things and learning from other people who have done it successfully. And this is what I came up with after 
many years of experience, experimentation, and uh, some failures, some successes. In the end, once I develop this, I speak over a dozen languages now, including some very hard ones. So if you want to learn a language fast, you can either take this and search for materials and start doing it on your own. You are free to try. You can also go get in my course. It's 99 euros a month. Uh, basically, it's a guided course. You apply all of this to whatever language you want to learn. You've got all the materials inside. Uh, it's a 12-week program, so you apply all these techniques a different learning plan per week for 12 weeks. That includes all of this. Uh, at the end of the three months, you will understand and speak the language well, as long as you follow the plan. And the last thing would be, uh, the last option would be to uh, hire me as a coach. You can also do that if you're interested.